Right. Welcome, everybody. I'm joined today. Uh, this is Rick Cohen with the National Council of Nonprofits. I'm joined today by Amy Sample Ward, CEO of N10, the Nonprofit Technology Network. She's a member of the Nonprofit Times Power and Influence Top 50 and one of the heroes behind the effort to save the .org registry late last year and early this year, an effort that the National Council of Nonprofits was proud to be a part of as well, and a time that really uh, seems so far away now. Uh, Amy, <laughs> thanks for joining me today. Yeah, you are much too generous. And also, oh my gosh, that feels like forever ago, even though I think it was four months ago. <laughs> yeah, it was just as uh, the pandemic was starting to spread. I think the decision was in February, March. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, different time, a different world. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but let, let's start our conversation with some of the basics. I, okay. you know, I hope that everyone watching today is, is already a member of N10, but for those who aren't, for those who don't know N10, can you share a little bit about what N10 does? Totally. So uh, I'll start by saying N10 is a nonprofit, which sometimes folks get confused about because we serve other nonprofits. So we're kind of an intermediary capacity building organization. And our focus is making sure that all other nonprofits are able to really meet their mission, really meet community needs by the strategic and racially equitable use of technology in their organization. Certainly a mission that has uh, never felt more broadly relevant than in the middle of 2020. <laughs> Exactly. And speaking of that, I mean, the reason we're talking today is this terrific new resource that you just came out with, the Equity Guide for Nonprofit Technology. Uh, now, of course, equity, um, it's more than a buzzword. It's something that right. uh, many organizations are uh, finally, I'll say, earnestly tackling. Mm -hmm. Um, but not a lot of folks think about it in terms of technology. So mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit about what does equity and technology look like? Yeah. Yeah, it's true. I think, you know, N10, we work at the intersection of two very problematic sectors, really, when it comes to racial equity. Um, the nonprofit sector is steeped in I mean, I don't even know how many layers we want to pull back <laughs> of inequities that that exist in our own sector. And then you add the technology sector in, which I think gets a lot more uh, news and, and media coverage about their, you know, racial diversity within technology companies or in leadership or efforts that they're potentially taking or not. So it, it, the, at the crux of both of those sectors, it feels like everywhere you look, there's inequity. And the guide acknowledges technology within the nonprofit world in three different essentially like scenarios. So the using of technology that means anyone inside of the nonprofit, what, what tools are you adopting? How are you training your staff? How are you making those decisions? Creating technology, which is both done by nonprofits and vendors. And then the funding or investing in technology. Again, it's done inside of nonprofits as well as outside. So it is a pretty big guide, but it reflects, I think, some of the most um, actionable things that organizations can do to directly have more equitable outcomes within their organization, both for the impacts it has on staff, the impacts it has on community members, and on program of uh, success. So happy to talk through examples if that's helpful. Um, I would love, I, I wish that we were talking right now with like a live red phone and people could call in with their, <laughs> with their question and we could chat through scenarios because, um, you know, I think the last six months, you know, operating through this pandemic and 10 staff have essentially had those phone calls every day, you know, folks calling in and saying, Oh my gosh, we just, you know, we had to leave the office. Now we're all remote, but we're in Alaska and it's really far between where everyone is and no one had laptops. Is it okay if people use their phones? Well, there's the easy answer of like, yes, probably it is fine that they use their phones, but it opens the door to so many equity potential questions, right? Are you paying for their phone? Is their phone on data or do they have internet in their house so they could be using their phone over the internet do you have a phone number in the office that they're having to pay to forward to their you know there's just 
all of these other impacts that we don't necessarily associate with the technology decision, right? We're just like, oh, can they technically use their phone? Yes, phones still work, you know? <laughs> but, but what does it mean to make that technology decision? And that's, I think, the angle that the guide tries to take on all these different scenarios. Yeah, and I know there's been a lot of conversation the last several months about you know, access to high-speed internet. Uh, right. A lot of it focused on learning for you know, kids who are, are doing uh, remote school. Uh, but I mean, the same applies for, uh, for nonprofits who have all gone, uh, well, for those who have been able to go remote, uh, there are a lot of nonprofits with missions that require in-person interaction, but right. uh, not everybody has access to the same uh, home internet. They don't all have access to, uh, you know, a, a state-of-the-art uh, computer, whether it's a desktop or a laptop. Some of the things right. that we, you know, we take for granted. Granted, not many nonprofits have state-of-the-art computers <laughs> yes. in, in their own offices. But you know, when when you're talking about uh, you know unequal access to uh, right. the technology at home to be able to continue doing our jobs, it, it's just kind of brought it uh, front and center. Uh, right. And, and, well, and, and even it, the examples you're bringing up, you know, the guide, there's no, there is no human way that we would create a guide, especially in one, one instance of the guide that has every single scenario, every single recommendation, every form of inequity included, you know, and the guide doesn't try to say it's comprehensive in that way. And it doesn't try and say it's done. You know, we're going to continue to build on this. The working group still exists. More folks are welcome to join the working group and we'll continue to add to this over time. You know, there may be things that are in it that go away or get modified and new things get added. But really what I hope folks can do with the guide is yes, of course, very directly take inspiration from the guide on specific, you know, suggestions that are included, but also just learn the practice of asking who is benefiting and who is getting burdened by this technology policy, this technology decision, so that it isn't about having to use an external guide in the future to say, oh, let me look up that specific policy recommendation, right? That you as an organization have built the capacity, you kind of built up the muscle memory that in any of those conversations or decisions, you are saying, wait a second, let's just check in on who's gonna benefit from this. And, and if we can anticipate inequity and build around that so that it's not perpetuated constantly. Yeah, building it into the organizational culture and values. So it's, right. not, it's not an add on, you have to you know, think about in addition to things, it, it's already there. Exactly. Uh, now you brought up the working group and this, yeah. uh, Sounds like it's a um, it's a document that it's a living document. It's something that's yeah. going to continue to be updated. Can you talk about how it came together? You know, how where did the idea come from, and mm -hmm. uh, how it you know what were the considerations uh, that that brought it together? Yeah, great question. The um, about four years ago, we had uh, well every year we have two times where all the board and all the staff have in person planning meetings. Um, remember those in-person meetings? Uh, so four years ago at the fall board and, and staff times together, we did an activity that was essentially a visioning activity, but taking it less from, you know, the strategic planning world of like, what's our vision for our work? And more just saying, what's the state of the sector? What do we think the state of the sector will be in a number of years? And, and what's our role in serving the sector? And both through the staff's activity of that and the boards, the number one need that emerged was something that spoke to the ethics and equity of this intersection, right? There's, there are resources that exist about equity in nonprofits. There's certainly lots of criticism and, and guidance to the tech sector about that, but there isn't anything that speaks to what technology is doing to exacerbate some of those problems. So um, we started elevating content on that and writing articles and, and doing a number of things. And then last year in 2019 decided like, all right, this is it. Like we need, we need something that feels very real and tangible and you know, like an external 
kind of third party validated tool that organizations can take because we're hearing from nonprofit staff that regardless of where they are and kind of the org structure, what they don't have is something that others in decision making kind of power are going to listen to um, because we already know like there are these inequity, uh, inequitable power structures in organizations. So we convened a working group, I think 20 or so folks all across the sector, folks who work in agencies, who build software, folks who use software in nonprofits, you know, all these different experiences and perspectives, as well as racial identities, gender identities, et cetera. And um, one thing that I think is so powerful about the, the kind of year long process of the working group is that there's no one person, certainly myself included, who could have written all of this right uh folks were constantly in our in our meetings saying oh that's an incredible idea i've never thought of that you know and learning from each other so it feels like the guide again although it's not done and it will never be done and will continue to to evolve it over time feels like such a great culmination of lots of different expertise areas lots of different backgrounds and that i think makes it that much richer right it, it isn't just you know some staff at n10 who came up with our like top 10 list of things we wish organizations would change there's there's a lot represented here and i think that means that really whoever you are wherever you sit inside your organization whatever your organization does um and whatever your relationship tech to technology using it creating it funding it there is a lot in here for you to learn from and unpack but also to move forward in your organization and, and that's one of the things i really appreciated it because you know right up front in there is uh you know a list of tips for people you know no matter what your role is with the organization whether you're the ceo of the organization or you are the person involved in technology purchases or you're just you know regular staff of the organization and you want to get the conversation started uh, that that's something that um, i'll say i was really impressed by because you know often it, you know the the hardest thing is trying to figure out how to get the conversation started uh, and you know this guide really provides that um, that guidance and granted you know it, it's not one size fits all. Every organization right. is different. Uh, the resistance within organizations, of course, uh, you know, resistance or receptiveness, uh, you know, will will vary. But uh, it has some great concrete tips uh, for folks at really any level in every role, uh, because it, you know, it, it's something that I, I know folks at N10 have said for many years that technology you know, in an organization shouldn't just be, you know, the IT person, um, you know, we're all touching technology. We're yeah. you know, entering things in a database. We're uh, sending up- We're operating in a pandemic because of technology. Exactly. You know, this is, I think just to that point, it's gonna take every person in an organization caring about and investing in some some level of, of commitment to equity to move these things forward. And hopefully the guide can be a way that staff, regardless of their title or their tenure at the organization, can build power by getting to say, these aren't my random program manager ideas or communication director ideas. Like I'm taking this and I'm automatically building power into these recommendations by getting to bring all of the work group into those meetings in your organization. Yeah, and, and that's that's where we need to get to. So, uh, and Amy, thank you for, for yeah. helping helping nonprofits get started in that. Um, you know, for anyone viewing this video, we'll drop the link to the guide uh, right below. Uh, if you're looking at this video because you saw it in the newsletter, the link <laughs> here will will also be next to the the little screen capture of this. Uh, and for anyone else, can definitely visit n10.org. That's n-t-e-n.org, uh, and I'm sure it's pretty easy to find there. Yes. Uh, so, Amy, thanks again for yeah. um, joining today, and, and thanks for this great new resource for nonprofits. I I really hope everybody takes the time to read it, to 
book market come back. Watch yeah, and let me know what you think. Back. Let me, you know, let me know if you want to join the working group. We, we, this is, this is not done. So we'd love to hear your feedback and how you're using it and how we can, you know, give you even more tools to, to move this work forward in your organization. Great.